Mm -hmm. Oh, hey guys, how are you doing today? It's Dr. Mio to to talking. <laughs> kind of forgot my name there. <laughs> well, it's really hot today, and and I have been drinking a lot of water, and it just kind of got me thinking. You know, I've been drinking, drinking, drinking. And I'm just like. Man, I wonder if I'm gonna put on so much weight with so much water that I'm taking. Uh, and then that got me thinking of SIADH, uh, you know, SIADH, otherwise known as the syndrome of inappropriate antidiuretic hormone production. All right, so SIADH, S for the syndrome, I for the inappropriate ADH, antidiuretic hormone. So SIADH is the condition whereby the the brain precisely precisely the posterior pituitary gland of the brain produces an hormone known as antidiuretic hormone abbreviated as ADH and this hormone is produced by the posterior pituitary in the brain and it's released and uh, this hormone tends to go and act on the nerve fronts of the kidney at certain channel and at certain receptors, all right? Basically, its main function, all right, it's to stop diuresis. Now, diuresis has to do with loss of water, all right? It can be a free water or obligatory water, but antidiuretic, anti, goes against, so it stops diuresis. So ADH, antidiuretic hormone, is an hormone produced by the posterior pituitary uh, gland of the brain, which goes and acts on certain receptors in the kidney nephrons and basically stops water loss from the body. Now, if water is not lost from the body, if there's no loss of water from the body because of the action of this antidiuretic hormone, what happens to this water? It's, it is stored and it accumulates in the body. Now, why is it important for us to lose water sometimes? Um, it's just the way the body physiology works to maintain the fluid balance in the body. We need to we take in fluid inputs and we lose some output in the form of um, urine. But in a patient or in someone who has too much ADH hormone produced, all right, that diuresis function is lost, and what you have is retaining water. Now, what's the consequence of this? What are the implications of this? And you know what's very what's very important to know, and it's a question that normally you get on most exams with regards to SIDH is what is the volumic status of the patient who has this syndrome? Now, just think of it: if you are not losing water, then you are tempted to think that the water is accumulating within you. All right, so your body is storing a lot of water, so basically you feel that you would have so much fluid volume. In your within you, so you should be hyper volumic, hyper high volumic, a lot of body, um, a lot of um, fluid, fluid volume is increased in the body. So you are tempted to think that SIDH would lead to a hyper volumic state, but strangely, SIDH leads to a U volumic state, and U volumic means normal body, um, fluid volume. So an SIDH does not lead to a hypervolemic state, it leads to a euvolemic state. So that begs the question, how does that happen? Why does that happen? Now, whenever there's excess water in the body, this water adds to the components of blood volume. Remember, blood is made up of cells, such as red blood cells, white blood cells, other cells, as well as what? Plasma. And this plasma is made up of albumin, some other proteins, and as well as water, all right? So water is a component of blood. So whenever there's an increase in the amount of water or fluid in the body, it goes on to increase the water component of blood, so thereby increases the blood volume. So you have a high amount of blood now, and that blood is returned to the heart through the venous return into the right side of the heart, and then eventually from the right side of the heart, it gets to the left side of the heart and to the circulation. So if it's coming out of the left side of the heart, that's called cardiac output. So the cardiac output is also increased and your stroke volume is increased. Now, this is a whole long explanation. I'm just trying to keep it 
brief here because what I'm trying to explain here is why you have a U volumic state in SIDH, why there's no increase in the body weight in SIDH. When there's SSADH being produced, this SSADH antidiuretic hormone stop diuresis and causes reabsorption, retention of a lot of water. This SS water that has been retained increases the plasma volume, increases the blood volume, increases the amount of blood returning to the heart. Now blood returns to the heart through the right side. So it goes through the what? Inferior vena cava, draining blood from the lower part of the body, and superior vena cava, draining blood from the upper part of the body. And these veins dump the blood in the right side of the heart, precisely the right atrium. Now you can appreciate that because there is so much, this is a syndrome, it's an abnormality. Because there is SSADH, there is too much of this antidiuretic hormone, so which this has led to an excessive retention of water, excessive increase in blood volume going into the right atrium, beyond what the right atrium normally accommodates. So this excess blood volume going to the right atrium will lead to an enlargement, a stretch of the right atrium. Now, when there is a stretch, stretch of the chambers of the right atrium, that stretch initiates or triggers the release, all right, of what we call ANP, anti-natriuretic peptide, right? Anti-natriuretic peptide. So that's what happened. So. It is that AMP, antinatriuretic peptide, that accounts for the normalization of the blood, of the body weight. Now, you might be thinking, so what is, what is this natriuretic peptide? What's its main function? What's the function of the natriuretic peptide? The essence of this natriuretic peptide is to flush out sodium from the body. So, increased blood, SSADH, SS water being retained, SS increase in blood volume, SS blood being returned to the right atrium, SS blood volume in the right atrium leads to excessive stretch of the right atrium. That excessive stretch of the right atrium leads to the release of this natriuretic peptide. And this natriuretic peptide that has been produced leads to loss of sodium ion. The more sodium ion that is being lost from the body, all right, the more water follows it. So basically, the amount of water, the excessive amount of water that was retained by ADH is invariably flushed out by the excessive sodium that is being released by from the body by the natriuretic peptide. So water retained by ADH is eventually lost by the SS sodium, by the sodium lost because of the natriuretic peptide produced in the right atrium. So it balances itself out. Water retained leads is equal to water loss. So the net weight gain is what? Normal. And we use the word euvolemic, all right? Meaning normal blood volume. There is not hypervolemic, it's not high and it's not low because the water that has been retained because of the SSADH that same water has been lost with the help of natriuretic peptide which flushed out sodium and that sodium took water along with it. So the question you're normally asked on the exam is what would be the volumic status of someone with SIDH and the answer will always be euvolemic. Why? Because of what? SS loss of, because of, SS, because of loss of sodium which takes the SS water that was retained along with it because of the help of the word natriuretic peptide that was released in the right atrium and the release of the natriuretic peptide was due to the stretch of the right atrium. The stretch was as, a, was as a result of increased blood volume coming to the right atrium. The next question you normally ask is what would happen to the fractional excretion of sodium? Now just break that, break that down. Fractional excretion of sodium. Forget the fractional. What happens to, so what happens to the amount of sodium being excreted in this patient with SIDH because of the natriuretic peptide, the amount of sodium excreted is increased. So what will happen to the fraction of sodium 
as excreted in SIDH because of the reproduction and release of natriuretic peptide in the right atrium, it's increased. So if you are looking at a lab result of a patient and you notice that there is an increase in a fractional excretion of sodium, one of the differential diagnoses that should be in your mind is SIDH. And that's one. If you did a blood test to look at the amount of ADH hormone in this patient's blood, this, the amount of ADH in the serum of this patient's blood will be high. All right. If I looked at the lab result and I saw high amount of ADH, and I saw the increase in fractional excretion of sodium, then I can guess that this is SIDH. And if I was to think clinically, what would be the body habitus? How would this patient look like? What would be the body size of this patient? It would be normal. Okay, so those are things to think of, all right? But that being said, you also have to think about the plasma osmolarity of these patients. What would happen to the plasma osmolarity? Would it be increased? Would it be decreased? Would it be normal? So but we'll talk about that in another, in another series, all right? So what could cause SIDH? Well, what you think about it, what do you think could lead to an excess production of ADH? Antidiuretic hormone is an hormone that is physiologically produced, all right, to maintain the water balance in the body, to help as eliminate the extra amount of fluid in the body, because the body needs to keep maintaining a certain amount. But in this case, the posterior pituitary, something has triggered it to produce too much ADH. So what can trigger it? Something that can make it go out of control like a cancer, a tumor cell in the pituitary gland, in the posterior pituitary. Remember, cancer cells are cells that undergo unregulated control. So their functions, their actions are unregulated. So there's an unregulated autonomous production of ADH. And that's why that too much ADH will lead to excessive water retention, which will cause the whole cascade of what we've just talked about. So that's one tumor of the pituitary gland, precisely in the posterior pituitary. All right. Now, something else you can also think of is trauma. Sometimes trauma, in its way, can also trigger an ADH, uh, SIDH, and even certain medications, carbamazepine, and other kind of medications also have a way of triggering SIDH. So medication could be a cause. Right, it could be a side effect of some medications. It can be due to a tumor in the posterior pituitary. It can be due to trauma. All right. So those are three common reasons of SIDH that you should know of, and the clinical manifestation. But the two key thing you need to know is that the body habitus is euvolemic, and the reason behind that is because of the natriuretic peptide that flushes out sodium, which takes along with it the excess water that was retained because of the ADH that was produced. And the other thing you need to know about is the fractional excretion of sodium, which is essentially increased, again, due to the natriuretic peptide. The last thing you need to know about is where is the natriuretic peptide produced? In the right atrium. Why is it produced? Because of stretch of the right atrium. So I hope this was helpful. And good luck to everyone out there who benefited from this video. Just give it a like and please subscribe for more content. Thank you.